In 2011, in November, UNESCO declared April the 30th, International Jazz Day. It celebrated worldwide, bringing together scholars, academics, artists, and those in the know of this genre that goes way, way back together. So this year, we decided that we are going to engage Brenda Sisani, one of the leading voices in the arts in South Africa, and particularly in jazz, on her views about what is the state of South African jazz and what makes South African jazz so exciting in 20. 17 so come with us and let's have this conversation with her by design you know that the slaves uh, would go out and sing the slaves did that in Cape Town mm -hmm. do you know uh, that's why we have the do it in Yvijar. Yeah. same thing was happening on Congo Square and that's how the music started so inevitably the blues came out of there people were feeling blue they mm. were missing home yeah. it, it, you know what I'm saying and all the other genres came out of there in fact um, there's a, you know, for me, I always I step back from using the word jazz sometimes because other people feel that it's, it's not jazz, it's classical African music. Right. You know, um, jazz was named by other people that gave it the name, you know what I'm saying? And there's other negative connotations to say this music used to be played in men's clubs, mm -hmm. those kind of spaces and all of that, while certain activities happened. But for me, if, if my, 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 my notion serves me well, this was music that people used to to, 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 to engage and indulge in, in their personal time when they were not with the master or the mistress, when they were themselves and not being slaves. So it could be anywhere, it could be in a drinking house, it could be in the so-called um, gentleman's club, it could be you know, in, 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 a, in a beer hall or anywhere else. Do you know what I'm saying? When people celebrate themselves or even during ceremonies. The face of South African jazz 2017 as we sit here. Mm -hmm. What role do they play and what role have they played in the shift where South African jazz is at the moment? Those young people. And in terms of the youth at large, hey, the collection has started again. They're collecting vinyl, they're revisiting <laughs> old music, they're making this music look very exciting again. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Even to me, who's listened to it for a long time, or to you, anybody mm. at home, they're making it look hip again. You know, and over and above that, as creators themselves, they bringing another twist because they're brave. So they're the ones that are not afraid to say, "Well, you're not going to tell me that South African jazz is not jazz. You're not going to tell me Sibusile Klaba is not jazz." Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're the ones that are taking up the conversation right now and challenging it and and giving it back to us. And you know where they're taking it from? The classics that they're listening to. You know, so so there's a, so there's a revival is coming through them. It's it's actually pretty exciting and more than anything else they are the ones that are traveling the world yeah if you see albums that have come from collaborations across across continents right now the Netherlands is coming to play here there's a band that's launching next week it's somebody from Spain from the Netherlands from South Africa do you know what I'm saying we're going across the border we're going straight to Mozambique there's activities we're going to Botswana to Lesotho you know um, you know so so I, I believe that they have really brought it back into our face if we thought we wanted to forget about it and in that way they've they've reminded us of a lot of history and women in in the space we are finding women in this space young women that are also pushing just as hard as their male counterparts in fact i like that i like that because when we talk about the young ones right now we talk about both uh, you know across the gender line and 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 i think women with their organizational skill are bringing, are bringing even more. It's, it's, it's natural. Women always are the ones that pass down mm -hmm. the heritage. You know, they whisper, they wear the, the, the garments, they show what used to be worn then and all of that. So so when, when you find them as musicians, you find that their narrative goes deeper than just being excited about playing the music. Mm -hmm. They want to see Emma Kuzeni, last year's Young Artist of the Year, Standard Bank, you know, turns around and says, I want to revisit the places of the Brotherhood of Breath and all these musicians that left the country. Mm -hmm. But also I want to represent the fact that uh, just because I'm a trombone, this doesn't make me stand out you know in fact I've got a woman's band can you believe that they are gender bending kind of band and genre bending kind of band as well what is jazz according to Brenda jazz is a is a personal journey of reflection I think when you hear the music you immediately go into yourself it stops and arrests you so um, so for me it, it, it creates that personal journey so when I go back and remember that I'm listening to the music, it keeps on taking me back to where I want to go. And sometimes it's the design of the sound or maybe the intention of this musician to say, this is the story I'm telling. Sometimes I get influenced by the title of the album, but at the end of the day, it's a personal journey through the music. What, what, what does your band consist of? 
You know, um, my leaning at the moment is, is really on how we are living out the indigenous instruments, which I think are so beautiful. Um, you know, the first time I heard Madosini, I was totally blown away. The first time I heard Madala Gunene, I was blown away. The first time I heard Maxim Tambo sing, I was blown away. But do you find them in the jazz genre? I don't know. But you can find them in my jazz band or jazz big band. Mm -hmm. The first time I heard Happy Twidey play as freely as he does today, I was blown away. The first time I heard Spongle Kumalo singing between genres, you know. Um, the first time I heard Siyama Kuzeni uh, do her step and, and, and and, 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 and do her voices and, and, and all those things. I, I, I similarly blown away. Just like, uh, you know, when Brahim beats a solo and introduces a song with her Jolia, which is a, which is a Ghanaian outfit, you know. So, so a band for me would be a, a, a fusion of both Western instruments and uh, indigenous instruments, particularly from South Africa, you know, including Bostoro Toro. And uh, it's a musical director who understands how to bring out the best of these musicians. Which young musician is exciting you at the moment? Who are you excited about right now? Hmm. You're asking such a hard question. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always excited. You know, I get, because I work every day with this, you know, I'm excited by every new idea that gets thrown in my face, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was having a conversation with Benjamin Jafter, who's the current uh, Young Artist of the Year, and the stories he told me, the pieces that he played me since he was awarded, the freedom of, 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 of expression that he's, the freedom to create that he now has, suddenly I'm hearing d different ideas from him. Mandla Mlangeni, I love. Um, um, uh, you know, some of them in, in a classical way, you know, I like Nomfundo um, Kaluva, you know, I think she's got an incredible mind and, and, and a presence on stage. Um, phew, there are so many of them. And, and, and I mean, I look, I, I um, for, sometimes I even, I don't want to see these borders. I want to talk about Sasomi, who's got Ugandan roots in the same vein.